Hello and welcome to LaserFeast Directory Server Training by Cities Digital. This video will introduce the basic concepts and features of LaserFeast Directory Server. LaserFeast Directory Server allows systems administrators to manage LaserFeast Server application licenses and LaserFeast user licenses from one central location. The Directory Server is on the server side of the LaserFeast product suite and it sits above any LaserFish application server or product. The directory server functions in many ways. It's a web-based administrative tool that allows you to manage your LaserFish Rio users and application licenses. You can create LaserFish users, add directory users, and grant user licenses. You can even configure Active Directory synchronization to automatically update your named user list. You can also create organizations, allowing you to reserve licenses for certain departments. You can register named devices. And you can review your application registrations and allocate new application licenses to other new LaserFish servers. You can access the directory server from the start menu on the LFDS server or the desktop shortcut, as well as using the URL of HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash the machine name or server name forward slash LFDS from a workstation or on the server directly. The agenda here is to launch directory server administration, take a look at site administration security, set up identity providers, review active directory synchronization rules or set them up, We'll take a look at account allocation, where we can create organizations or groups, register devices, and register repository named users, as well as configure applications. With that said, let's get started. Now that we've connected to the LaserFish directory server main page, we're taken to the overview page. We can see various information about available organizations, assigned licenses, and those available or in use, community users, employee participants are a subscription model. So subscription employee participants are listed here if available. Scrolling down, we can see the available applications and any registered instances. As we can see here, we have a distributed computing cluster. One is installed out of 10 total available. We can click on the server listing tab and shows us any of the particular servers on which those applications are installed. Full list there. At the very top, we do have a gear icon. This allows us to get into the settings tab. It's the same as clicking on the settings up above. We can also click on a usage report, which will download a Excel file about all the user licenses that have been allocated. If we click on the settings tab, we see several tabs. Just below that, we have our general tab, email server, email template, password security, identity providers, and STS sites. In the general tab, we see we have a master license. We can renew our master license whenever we purchase additional users or applications. This will query LaserFish for the new licensing and add it to the server without requiring any service restarts. Our licensing site will typically be set with a SQL database. There's no need to modify the connection string if it's already set up. We typically would see in a Windows Active Directory domain directory synchronization being set up, but you don't have to do that. It is optional. You can set the polling interval to query every hour and even more than 24 hours. Deleted users from the Active Directory system can be deleted from the repository from directory server as well. You can display the organization list on the sign-in page of the STS site, in other words, the security token service site. You can enable clustering for failover. Trimming audit report data is available. And if you want a SAML site to identify through the directory server, you can set its landing page and entity ID, and you can display the default site as well. Email server and email templates are used in the case of password resets by the user. Password tab is available to be used for particular accounts that are not directory accounts, but specific LaserFish user accounts. Repository users are different than directory users, and a repository user would need to have its own password policy. 
and you can set those here. The security tab is available for setting site security. So this licensing site that we're at, this is where we set the users who would have access to the licensing site and what rights they might have once logged in and connected to this licensing site. The identity providers tab, this allows us to configure our connection to a Active Directory domain or any other e-directory type site and provider. You can add additional providers. Those are uh, available as Active Directory, Novell e-directory, other Active Directory, or a SAML identity provider. Click back on the security tab and then back to our identity providers. We can always run synchronization. If you have an Active Directory configuration already in place and you've allowed group synchronization, you can create rules for Active Directory synchronization. And for that group, you can assign what kind of license that group would be using. In many cases, you'll want to assign your type of license to that group, typically a full license, which would be a Laserfish repository license. A community user would be those users who can log into both Laserfish's repositories and forms. Employee participants are a subscription model for forms access as well. Finally, on STS sites, if you want to connect to a SAML site or just enable a security token service site, you can configure that here. Just click the Add button. Make sure you have your display name. You can add host names or SAML endpoints. For identity providers, you can also configure security so that certain users who have access to the licensing site may also have rights to the identity provider's configuration, allowing them to set up an identity provider or not to be able to set up identity providers. So the security tab is useful in that case. And that's your general settings. Next, we would want to configure accounts. So we'll click on the accounts tab up at the top here. And as we can see, we have quite a few accounts configured. You can configure groups. So if you have an active directory group, you can add it here and make sure that they are configured with a particular license type. And you can even add them to an organization. Currently, we're highlighting the users tab. And we see that these users have our particular connection. You can enable and create users as Windows Active Directory users, which is very typical. And this could be a group or an individual user. A Laserfish user is a repository named user and is used when you have a account that needs access to a repository but may not be an Active Directory user. For example, a consultant. LDAP users are not very common but could be used from one of those other alternative directory services and SAML users can be authenticated here as well. If we click on the Organizations tab, we can see that we have an organization or two Clicking on the created account, we can see that we have certain users assigned to this organization. We see that the licenses, we can assign a certain number out of the available to this organization, both full licenses and any other available licenses as well. Security can be set here so that a user in the licensing site has rights to this organization and that they can manage this organization. The organization itself has some certain email settings that will inherit from the server and template settings preset in the settings area previously viewed. We have groups as well. Groups are a way of assigning users from an Active Directory group to a directory server group, which then can be allocated to a form system, for example. You can add forms users from a directory server forms group, which is pointing back to an Active Directory group, with really a handy way of assigning that. You can also assign device licenses, which can be connected to a particular computer. And those users connecting to that computer will use that license type allocated. Uh, one simply types in your computer name, click the lookup button to find the host ID of that particular computer, assign it an organization if you want, set up your license type, and then click Register. Our next area to configure is applications. These would be the various applications you've purchased in your license. As we can see, this license includes all the main applications available. Yours may not show everything. If we have a Forms Professional installation, we can see there's a number here on the far right. This means that that application has been installed twice. We can see that the Laserfish Discussion server has been installed once. We have a mobile server. Our Laserfish server has been installed once, but can be installed multiple times. If we want to add an application, we can do that. We see that we have our applications, and clicking on any one of them, if we click on, for example, Laserfish server, 
we see that there's additional information to be found. We have some instances. We can see that that server has been installed. And we have the Get License button. This allows us to copy that license file and update it on that particular server upon which it is installed. Or if we're going to install it on a new server, we can take and copy that license to the new server. And that file would get copied to the license file folder on that particular server on which this LaserPay server application is installed. You can add additional applications if you're licensed from your main master license. Your master license will dictate which product names are available in this list. Audit reports are available to query what is going on in the particular repository. We can check for administrative actions. We can check for different event classes, what's been going on, and query what has been configured and set in directory server. We can even sort by date ranges. Clicking search will give us a list of audit events in the grid view that we have over here on the right side. This concludes our training video on LaserFish Directory Server by Cities Digital. Thank you for watching and have a great paperless day. <laughs>